You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, God damn it! Get the point. Good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody, and happy wacka 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 doodle Wednesday. And yeah, that one was coming from way back in the day. Um, <laughs> and I heard it on the radio driving into town this morning, and I thought, hey, that will go really good with a couple of the links that I pulled up from my pocket for today but until then wait for it because i gotta say hey to everybody and you are listening to grammy's rocket chair here on real liberty media.com channel 10 also on the rlm radio.xyz site the rlm tune in radio station the rlm internet radio station and um the rlm spreaker channel although it i believe it is world truth dot org spreaker channel or whatever but it's still it's the rlm spreaker channel now and if you are listening on spreaker and you want to chat with me come on over to real liberty media.com think of a nickname join the chat give me some static i'll give it back because quite frankly sweetheart i'm out in the middle of the boonies and i got crap for internet <laughs> and if i have too many things open things start getting really wonky so, <laughs> we just ain't going to go there, okay? Um, I I try to respond if I have anything, but it's always after I'm done broadcasting if I respond to you in uh, Spreaker. But until then, let's go say hey to some people over here. And yeah, man, I was checking out the chat before I started, and wow, things are getting a little bit lively over there. But first, let's go to Twits. The twits are us. Twitter, Twitter. Thank you, Barman, for tweeting it out, letting everybody know that I am live and in poison. Um, ooh, ETF, no more lies. The environment is in us, not outside of us. The trees are our lungs. The rivers are bloodstream. We are all interconnected. And what you do to the environment, ultimately, you do to yourself. That's from Ian Summerhalder. Summerhalder, Summerhalder. Thank you, Ian. That was actually, and I shut off. I'm I'm using Brave, and it keeps telling me that I have notifications. And it's like, I did not say I wanted to get notifications from any websites. So, Brave, why are you doing this to me? Although I really do like you as a browser, I'm still figuring out some of the little tweaks and all that other fun stuff but yeah um let's see oh san fran nan (laughs) oh well let's see i saw Vinny over here on twitter as well and honey badger bar don't care (laughs) i like that honey badger i like the honey badger i also see adam is here as well as cutie anon and let's see who else is here that pretty much pretty much who I'm seeing so far. In any case, moving along, over here on Facebook, I did post it over here on Fakeybook and um it looks like oh my baby girl is playing on Facebook. And who else is over here playing? Weeda! Hi Weeda, how are you doing, sweetheart? Oh, and my niece just got settled in in her new home and she did her first her first grocery shopping all by herself and she forgot a bag at the grocery store that she paid for. <laughs> So I told her, hey, darling, that's no fair. You jumped that hurdle a little bit earlier. You being an overachiever? (laughs) I think she is. I think she is. Oh, well. Hi, everybody over on Facebook. Oh, and Brother Al. Hi, Brother Al. He's over in Hawaii. See how he is. Um, Over here on realliberty.org, thank you, Grimner, for letting everybody know that I am live and in poison. I see you and Cowboy Tech, as well as myself, are live right now on there. Um, Over here on Freedoms Network, once again, Grim told everybody I was live. Grim is everywhere. He's more places than I am. And I'm a lot of places. 
I get around, don't you know? <laughs> it's that whole love is like oxygen. It's all around you. It really is. And the only difference, the only thing I got to say is, you know, I've been, I had a discussion with my uncle the other day and we were talking about some weirdness in, you know, politics and how people um, have a tendency to, you know, perspective, how people view things. And I told him, you know, it's kind of like this whole thing of people equating sex with love. It's not the same thing. It is not. So all of you pervy ass pedophiles out there, just because you want to have sex with a little one doesn't mean you're loving them, hun. It means you're causing them pain. So stop it. Stop it before someone stops you. And when someone stops you, it's basically um, the people I know that would stop you. Well, you would be taking a nap. Let's just put it that way, shall we? Okay, um, over here on In The Matrix, there's all kind of people posting all kinds of way cool stuff. Hey, Rocket Girl. Oh, Rocket Girl, what's going on, sweetheart? Okay. Oh, sweet. Well, hey there, lady. How are you? I hope you're having an absolutely splendiferous wackadoodle Wednesday. I know I am. I got mowing done inside the fence. So all I got to do is outside the fence, which is another four acres. <laughs> Tis the season to be wheezing with all the hay fever and pollen and all that other fun stuff out there. Okay, let's see. Oh, mines. Yes, over here on mines. Thank you, Grim, once again for letting everybody over here on mines know that I am live and in poison on this wackadoodle Wednesday. And let me see here. Um, da -da -dun -dun, dun -dun -dun. Oh, pretty. Okay. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Keep that cursor rolling, Grammy. Moving along. <laughs> there you are, Vinny. I see you over here on Twitter. Okay, now to the place where you need to be if you want to give me some static. Because I will check the chat. And if you take my name in vain, a.k.a. type grams in there, it will flash at me. And I will go check it out and say, yo, dude, what? <laughs> Ooh, ETF has something about the uh, Gray State movie. And you know what? I That's one of those few things that I actually donated to. Got a t-shirt and a poster and I don't remember what all else I got. But I was totally bummed when I heard that he... He was Arkansided, and the rest of his family was taken out as well. That's just rude. Just frickin' rude. But <clears throat> over here in the RLM, this fun little chatty place, right up top I see Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, closely followed by Beetle. Hi, Beetle. Is Pippi with you, hon? I hope Beetle is. I hope Pippi is getting scratchings and all that fun. I got rascal on my lap right now she's trying to grab the microphone i also see grimner is here the rlm god as well as the lovely moose goyle and looky there anti is also here as well as the asmodeus asmo the lovely beth z is also in the chat as well as chalcedony and echelon free enslaved is here yay free and stay oh well thank you Vinny, for some static <laughs> you're so awesome yeah. Oh, no, I was just clearing my throat. Excuse me. <laughs> Moving along. Moving along. Where was I at? Me. Yeah, I was at me. I am here physically and mentally. Okay, don't hold your breath. Uh, I.B. Don C. is also here as well as Java, 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 Java Doctor 2. How you doing, Java? How you getting along with your knee, honey? Just checking. I also see a Ponder Gander here. That's one of Vinny's alter egos. Vinny has so many. We're going to, we actually, you know, when he's not looking, we call him Sybil, because, yeah, <laughs> he got lots of poisonalities. I also see the lovely Kate is here. How's that great state of Florida doing for you, sweetheart? Oh, yay, Pippi's in Beetle's lap. Cool beans. Um, I hope you're not getting nasty weather. We've had some threatening stuff the last few nights out here in the boonies, but, 
and I was out on on the riding mower mowing like a crazy person trying to get the drainage ditches mowed before the rain came in and then I put a rain gauge up because I thought okay I bought a rain gauge I'm going to put it up on the fence and you know what the rain dissipated so if you get too much rain in your neck of the woods what you got to do is put a rain gauge up because the rain will go up <laughs> no now she's going to measure it we don't want to have any of that stuff Okay, moving along. <laughs> I know, a little bit on the goofy side. Rob Oikes is here, and I see Rob fired up that bubbler. Thank you ever so much, Rob, for the bubbler. I will partake digitally, cybernetically, from the cybernetic superhighway. In other words, I'll just sit here and go, damn, Rob's got a bubbler and I don't. Man, I also see Rom, Roms, yeah, spit that out right, Roms is here, as well as Vanna White, who is the lovely letter turner, and she lets us know what the weather is when we do the little, little, yeah, when you, when you type in what you're supposed to type in to get your weather, yeah. Vanna White gives that to you. So does the weather dork, and weather dork is here too. I think weather dork has a crush on Vanna. But, you know, th you know how them bots are. They're kind of weird. Vinny's here. Vinny's here in multiple personalities, even. Holy smokes, Vinny. Don't get too confused, hon. Uh, Woodman is here. Hey, Woody. How you doing, hon? Is it really, really hot down there? I know where you are. I'll bet you it's really, really hot. Um, Phantom is here. Thank you, Phantom, once again, for the awesome intro that you did for me. You are just totally splendiferous dude i also see and well then is in the chit chat and well then was being very chitty and very chatty earlier in the chit chat or what little i got to see um cyborg noodle is also here may you be touched by a cyborgian noodliness for all those pastafarians in the crowd frumpy too is also here as well as gooberzilla hey goob you do realize that outer space is just anything outside of your body right you do realize that, don't you? Gromit is also here, as well as JJ's 999. Hey, JJ's, how's things over in Scotland? Bonnie, Scotland. I hope no, you don't have no breezes blowing up the kilt, that, unless it's really warm and you're needing to cool things off, but moving along. Karl Marx is also here, as well as Kiss. Keep it super simple, which is not what a lot of people do these days. Just saying. I also see Moy 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 is here as well as Sock Puppet. Hi Sock, how you doing? And Slim Jim Flim is here. Hi Slim Jim, long time no see, sweetie. Hope everything's going well for you. And let's go take a peek over here in the red pill. See who's in the red pill that ain't in the RLM. Um, I see F. Canella is here as well as was free enslaved over there. I think so. Um, Juan Ataco is also over here as well as KD Troxel and a quantum cupcake. Hmm, a quantum cupcake. That sounds very interesting. I also see a soily over here as well as Ventures. So, yes, Moosey. Yay, Moosey. I didn't know if you were just logged in, sweetheart, or listening. Okay, so. Let's see, where do I want to get to first? I think I will just, I will go check, because, I mean, I found some really cool things after, you know, oh, let's just go here, because it's a wackadoodle Wednesday. This is from Breitbart.com. And you know how Creeper Joe is. This is another one of those examples of sex is not love. They are, they are not equal. They do not mean the same thing. You know, just like entitlement is not the same as rights. I said that earlier on Twitter as well. Um, just because you think you are entitled to something doesn't mean you have a right to it. Rights are God-given or Creator-given or just simply by virtue of you being here. But just because you think you're extra special doesn't mean you're entitled to anything. But good old Creepy Joe, Creepy Uncle Joe, he says the Second Amendment does not say you're entitled to own a gun. And I have to say, he is right. You're not entitled. It is your right to take up arms and to, vent, to defend yourself. It is your right. But you're not entitled. See, an entitlement is something that can be taken away. A right is not. There is a difference. Um... Let's see. Former VP 
Creepy Uncle Joe admitted that the Second Amendment exists but stressed during his speech in New Hampshire on Tuesday that it does not say everyone is entitled to own a gun. Now, once again, I have to say, you know, he's right because I really don't want to have a nine-month-old owning a gun either. They are not entitled to a gun. They are not. But, see, this is, this is how they do this. They do this wonderful word game stuff with you. They are casting spells upon you because if you do not know the language, if you do not understand how they play, you're going to fall for the deception. You know, it's that spewage that they feed you in the propaganda trough. Don't wash it down with fool aid, okay? Now, Biden, who was taking questions at the outdoor venue, then added, By the way, if one of you left the keys in your car down the street and the kid comes along and jumps in it and takes off, you could be held liable civilly for that. So if you own a gun, put a damn trigger lock on it, put it in a case, you have an obligation. I don't know that you necessarily have an, necessarily have an obligation. And just because you, some nimrod wants to come and steal your car, because you, okay, I got to say this. Out here in the boonies, most time we leave our keys in the vehicle. I know I do. Because, you know, if they're going to try and, you know, they want to swipe my car, I would much rather they take the car because the keys are in there in a strategic place, but they are in there. Um, and it's in my garage, which is locked. But, you know, most people break into garages first. In any case, um, you know, if they want to break into the car, instead of breaking into my house to find the keys to the car to go do whatever it is that they're going to go do, I'd much rather the keys be in the car and they just stay the hell out of my house. Because if they come into my house, Bessie's beside the bed. And I really don't want to clean up that mess. Sorry, Joe, Bessie does not have a lock on her trigger either. Just saying. But Biden also spoke about past gun bans that he supported, and he specifically referenced the 1994 assault weapons ban and noted that it also limited the number of bullets in a clip. Number one, what is your definition of an assault weapon? Because trust me, if you're going to pull a weapon with the intent to do harm... You are going to be assaulting someone. Now, is it necessarily a crime? Well, that depends on the intent. Are you intent is your intent to protect your family and your property? No, it is not a crime. If your intent is to do grievous harm to someone else so that you can take their property or take their life, a.k.a do the one the one commandment that I think we need, thou shalt not steal, do not take someone's things, do not take someone's life, do not take someone's innocence, a.k.a. rape, a.k.a. you pervy pedophiles like you, Uncle Joe, creepy Uncle Joe. So, what do you classify as an assault weapon, my dear? Because a baseball bat can be an assault weapon. A screwdriver can be an assault weapon. Number of bullets in a clip? Hmm, you're just going to make someone reload. Seriously. You cannot legislate morality, Uncle Creepy Uncle Joe. <laughs> it's pretty obvious with you. Additionally, to carry on with this, he spoke about being former President Dangleberry's point man for gun control following the December 14, 2012 attack on Sandy Hook Elementary School, which I'm not, I'm, you know, I don't. I don't be live. Remember, there is a lie in the middle of every belief and every, whenever you believe something, there is a lie in there. And I think that's intentional. I truly do. But back to this Sandy Hook thing. There's an awful lot of things that don't add up with that. An awful lot. I don't believe the story that was put out there one dang bit. Now, I will say... I will say that I'm not real sure nobody was killed in that because them sick bastards like their blood sacrifices. So, but it sure as hell wasn't the story that we were fed by the propaganda people in the mainstream media. And uh, as for your gun control, creepy Uncle Joe, 
I use two hands, so I'm controlling it just fine. Thank you very much. He also went on, went on to say that there are so many other things that we can do to make schools safer other than arming teachers. I don't know about, you know, see, that's another one of those things. You cannot legislate morality no matter how hard you try. You have to teach by example what is moral behavior. And that ain't happening. You, that just ain't happening. Huh. <sighs> Of course, he didn't specify, however, what those other things would be. But, you know, Creepy Joe has his agenda. He has a narrative that he is supposed to be out there touting. And so, therefore, therefore, who's who's got who in a stranglehold? Um... Oh, yay. Slim Jim said life's been very, very good to him. Good deal, Slim Jim. Okay, so now that I'm done with creepy Uncle Joe, because he is just a freaking creeper. He really is. And, you know, the only reason, the only reason that I am against the death penalty is because, no, I don't think they should get off that easy. It's just that simple. I think I think people should, you know, have to pay for their sins or their transgressions or whatever it is. And I don't I think the death penalty is entirely too easy for people. Unless you're trying to break into my house and do grievous harm to myself or my loved ones and and then sweetheart, if my aim is good, you will not be suing me for damages later because you won't be able to. Let's just leave it at that. Now, let's move on to something a little bit, a little bit nicer. Okay? I mean, it is a wackadoodle Wednesday, so, eh, here we go. Let's, and, <laughs> wow. I'm not getting to what I wanted to get to because I, squirrel. <laughs> this is from freebeacon.com. Bar trolls Pelosi at the Capitol. Madam Speaker, did you bring your handcuffs? <laughs> oh, that's just too funny. I don't care who you are. That's funny. Apparently, Attorney General William Barr asked Speaker Nancy Pelosi, good old San Fran Nan, the Botox biatch, if she brought handcuffs for him Wednesday at the Capitol following her accusing him of lying to Congress earlier this month. Hmm... According to multiple reports, Barr approached Pelosi following the National Peace Officers Memorial Service in Washington, shook her hand, and asked, Madam Speaker, did you bring your handcuffs? Pelosi smiled, that death smile that she has, basically because <laughs> her face is dead because of all the Botox, but she smiled and said, the House Sergeant of Arms or Sergeant at Arms was present if an arrest was necessary. To which Barr laughed and walked away. See, that's the walk away thing that I can do. Because when someone says something that moronic to me, I would have to laugh and just walk away. Because they ain't worth the jail time. They just plain ain't. Apparently some congressional demon craps have called for Barr to be jailed after the House Judiciary Committee voted to hold him in contempt when he ignored a subpoena for the unredacted Russia report by special counsel Robert Mueller. And I did see something earlier today um, about a witness to the Demon Craps Congressional Committee, whatever, whatever, that said that if he were to comply with their subpoena and answer their questions, he would be breaking the law. And so, it's a... Uh, Six of one, half a dozen of another, in other word, or to be more appropriate for this situation, telling them, <laughs> nanny, nanny, boo boo, stick your head in dog do. That's about all you're going to get out of me. So, which I find that, of course, we all know this is all distraction stuff. Be sure to be keeping your other, you, you got to have Marty Feldman eyes these days. Just saying. Because with all the distractions in the news, you got to keep another eye free to roam around <laughs> and see what's going on and make sure that there ain't a knife coming at your back. Because that's what these sons of bitches do. They have a tendency 
to do the lovely little distraction and then get you from behind. So, yeah, got to do that. Marty Feldman eyes. There's a reason for Marty Feldman eyes. Just saying. Um, okay, moving along. Moving along. I am now, seeing as how I feel much better because, yeah, that was a funny one. I am going to get to this other one that I saw in my pocket. I put it in my pocket the other day. And um, I just, I'm a hugger. You know, I, I just, if I see somebody and they look like they need a hug, I'm going to go up and I'm going to give them a hug. Now, if they're going to be all upset about it, it's like, well, I'm sorry. You want your hug back? I'll give it back to you. And then I hug them again because I learned from my mom. <laughs> so. This is from thehardysoul.com. And did you know that hugging is the most beautiful form of communication that allows the other person to know beyond a doubt that they matter? Unless creepy Uncle Joe is involved. And then the only way I'd be hugging him is to be putting some freaking handcuffs on his sorry ass. Just saying. And that's if that... Ugh. Man, now I got that gross mental image. Moving along. So, hugging is a powerful form of self-expression, and we express various kinds of emotions, moods, and feelings through hugs. And these include happiness, joy, excitement, fear, sadness, pity, love, and admiration. We also give to receive hugs to express care and comfort. Hugs are amazing, like sham wow, they're amazing. Amazing. Yes, someone took my name in vain. Um. <laughs> well, Grandma Carl Malden knows would probably do because, yeah. Um. <clears throat> yeah. Well, if we don't all have Marty, maybe maybe it's not necessarily a physical Marty Feldman eyes, but you got to definitely get that third eye involved when you keeping an eye on this kind of stuff. You know, maybe two eyes looking ahead and that third eye doing the 360. Maybe that's what you need to do. But yeah, Carl Malden knows works too because you can, you can smell when something's a stinker. Moving along, back to my article. So, there is a deep human connection that comes from linking your body with another person's and momentarily linking your soul's. So when a person is sad, a deep sense of comfort can be gotten from a warm hug. Hugs trigger several reactions that are not always aware of, and most of which can be highly beneficial to our health and general well-being. There's actually some scientific evidence and research to show that hugs are essential to our well-being. So here are five important reasons why you should be feel free to hug whenever the mood arises. Well, you know, except for when you're dripping with sweat. But then again, my farmer doesn't mind that. So, you know, he'd, he'd take sweaty hugs. <laughs> He's usually about the same way because, yeah, when he comes home and we get to working in the yard, we're both sweaty. So, eh, it's, all good. it's all good. Number one, hugs reduce stress levels. Did you know that? So see, it can also help lower your blood pressure. Uh -huh, I'm just putting that out there. Now, according to this, hugging a person can significantly reduce the levels of cortisol being circulated around the body. And a study published in 2013 experimented the effects on hugs or of hugs on people who were in long distance relationships. Each participant had to sit for a 15-minute conversation with their remote partner through a life-size huggable humanoid device. Oh, so while others converse through mobile phones. Now, the results showed that those who conversed with the huggable device had sig significantly reduced stress levels than their counterparts on the mobile phone group. I don't know that that... That's got a kind of a creeper feel to me. It's like those sex dolls that they're coming out with now. Seriously, people. Seriously. You don't need that crap. They're warping your mind. Stop paying attention to that nonsense. 
Get back to actual human interaction. That's where it's at. Now, um, stress exhausts a person tremendously. And when we are having a hell of a time at work or school, we feel weak, demoralized, and unhappy. And we seek the strength to forge ahead. One bear hug from someone you love can calm your emotions and take away the self-doubt. We draw strength and motivation from the warmth and closeness of the people who care about us. So next time you're feeling down, fold yourself into the arms of your partner or grab your kid up in your bear scoop because hugging kids is usually the best source of inspiration and motivation and their innocence radiates a cool aura around a person's soul. And I've got to tell you, this last weekend, I was out visiting the grandkids and um, watching lacrosse, which was just pretty freaking awesome. Both grandsons played in played lacrosse games, and both teams won. Yay, booyah! But my youngest grandson, he is such an old soul. He really is. And... Um, when he got home and saw that I was there, he come running up and just wrapped me up in a hug. And I mean, this was like a five minute long hug. He hugs good. And it was one of those, oh, thank you, little man. I needed that. And he said, I'm just charging your batteries, Grammy. Now, is that awesome or what? And then his big brother, when he got home from lacrosse practice, he come up and he gave me a big old super honker, pop my back hug because he's taller than I am. <laughs> and he's a good hugger too. But man, every once in a while, it's like, oh, dude, seriously, I, can I breathe now? But he's, he's an awesome, my grandkids are awesome huggers. Let's just, my granddaughter is as well, but you know, she's a, she's a teenager now. So it's kind of like, I don't want to hug Grammy too much. You know, one of them kind of things. In any case, hugs are awesome, especially from grandkids. Number two, hugging helps a person struggle with grief. Yes, 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 it does. When you lose someone that you love, it's one of the hardest things that you can go through in life. And in the wake of realization, we find ourselves unable to carry on or break free from the shackles of that painful grief. We lose sight of the future and burrow into the past, and we feel vulnerable and maltreated, as though the universe is punishing us for all the wrong we ever did, and the good we failed to do. Now a hug can rejuvenate our spirits and give us a true solace. And in times of grief and sorrow, Burying yourself in the arms of someone, whether we know or not, can soothe our pain and calm our souls. And it won't take away the grief completely, but it will give us strength and will to fight it and break free from the chains of emotional torture. When we make a condolence call, it's important to wrap the bereaved in our arms for as long as possible until they release the hug. Let them draw peace from your warmth. So yeah, if you know someone that really, really, really needs a hug, yeah. Number three, hugs make a person happier. Ah, see, that must be why I'm so happy most of the time. Hugs help to improve a person's mood and general disposition. And hugging and being hugged could even help keep your... Um, oxytocin levels humming. Ah. Now, in 2006, a study shows that the level of love hormones or the bonding hormone is highly elevated when we hug the ones that we love. And this affection may be long, uh, long, lifelong or short-lived, but it's there. Oxytocin is associated with happiness and euphoria, and its levels can raise when we come in close contact with the ones that we love. So, there you go. Hugs, 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 hugs. Now, um, 
its effect is even stronger in women and it stimulates the contraction of the oh it does the uterine muscles during labor so see if you if your lady is in labor just give her not a not a tight squeeze but give her a hug and it helps her it helps her it's also linked to decreased blood pressure in women see oh but not in men hmm now i recall receiving a hug from a hug happy two-year-old at a museum last year and he wasn't interested in the artifacts or painting all he cared about was the people little jake would walk up to everyone with open arms and be received with smiles and joy and i shed a tear at the ferocity of the love pouring from this little boy's heart i was on cloud nine the whole day and that's one hug i will never forget and yeah when a little one comes up to you and offers you a hug accept it and return it seriously that's how we teach compassion children learn from um, example because you know you can tell them all kind of stuff but they will follow how you you know they'll watch your behavior and they'll learn from your example that you're making so be careful number four hugs may reduce the risk of falling ill the other effects of hugging, which in, um, include stress reduction and happiness, may work together to help keep you healthy and less prone to illness, excluding conditions transmitted through bodily fluids and external agents. Although, if your immune system is always primed because you got someone you love giving you hugs all the time, you'll be able to fight that stuff off. That's just coming from me, not necessarily this. but. According to this, a 2014 study which involved 404 adult participants showed that hugs and social interaction may greatly reduce or prevent the negative effects of stress. Participants also exposed to the common cold virus and a majority of people who didn't fall sick were discovered to possess greater support systems and sources of affection than the others. So generally, illnesses will affect a weak and fatigued body more easily while there are other obvious frontline methods of preventing illness such as diet and exercise and proper medical treatment which does not necessarily in my personal opinion mean going to the doctor for every bump and bruise research your medicine for yourself seriously people because a lot of doctors just take what the big pharma reps tell them as gospel truth. They don't have the time and a lot of them don't have the inclination to actually do the research. Just saying. So, yes. Who said, hi Slim Jim. Okay. Now, finally, number five, hugs may reduce anxiety and fear. And I'll tell you what, if, if I'm scared and then there's someone close by me, you can bet your sweet bippy I'm going to be hugging on that person. <laughs> just, just putting that out there as well. I know, Vinny, I did. In any case, so when a person is terrified, tense, anxious, worried, or frightened, a hug can make them feel less of any of those emotions at any particular time. When adrenaline is coursing through a person's veins and they are deeply anxious or scared of something, being wrapped in, the, in another's arms is important to anchor their emotions and make them feel protected. They can draw courage and boldness from their hugger. And slowly, their heart rate may begin to reduce. And there's a 2013 study published by the Association for Psychological Science that says that touch may significantly alleviate fear in people with low self-esteem. And a researcher organized students on campus to fill out a questionnaire. And while they worked, she touched some of the participants on the shoulder blades with a brief open palm touch. It was later discovered that the students that she touched had less death anxiety while filling out the questionnaire. So give more hugs. Receive more hugs. Hugging is truly a beautiful form of communication. 
Deep bonds are created and fortified with hugs. Stress is reduced and happiness is lifted. Illness risk is diminished and fear can be alleviated. So just hug. And remember, hugs are absolutely wonderful. And I think that is also because seriously peeps we need to stop we need to start looking at at the behavior of the leeches that be that are trying to pervert our language and our behavior and our thought processes and they try they take what is a truly beautiful and wonderful thing and pervert it do not let someone do that okay just the same way that sex is not love. And love does not always e equal sex. So, hug people. Hug them with all your heart. You know, if you're going to hug someone, give them your mojo. Because they will be giving theirs back. So, yay, Slim Jim! Okay. That's right, Beth. Teach your children well. There you go. Okay. Let's see. Where do I want to go? Oh, it's getting, getting close to the end of my hour. Let me see. What do I have here? <laughs> I think I need to go to PI Gazette. There we go. I haven't been to the pig since last week Wednesday. I'm a slacker, although I did have a little bit of interaction over on Fakey Book with Hambo's lovely lady. Yes, I'm friends with her over on Fakey Book, and she is pretty awesome. I think I think she does an awful lot of researching for these guys. Hambo and Porcus, those two wild and crazy, politically incorrect goofballs. Now, according to these guys, word of the day is good stuff. It's a phrase. It's that potent, mind-warping, banned substance that Joe Biden is smoking these days. Ah, <laughs> this is the good stuff. Yeah, apparently Creeper Joe is smoking some exceptionally messed up stuff. In the quotable quotes section, it doesn't take a majority to make a rebellion. It takes only a few determined leaders and a sound cause. That was H.L. Mencken. Moving along. Moving along. Let me see. What do I have here? Lexophile. Oh. Oh, did you know that Alexophile describes those that have a love for words, such as, you can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish, <laughs> and to write with a broken pencil is pointless. Ba-ding, ba -doom. So, apparently there's an annual competition that's held in New York Times to see who can write or create the best original Alexophile. This year's submissions were, I changed my iPod's name to Titanic. It's sinking now. S-Y-N-C-I-N-G. How cute. England has no kidney bank, but it does have a liver pool. <laughs> Haunted French pancakes give me the crepes. <laughs> That's kind of cute. This girl today said that she recognized me from the Vegetarians Club, but I'd swear I've, n I've never, or yeah, I've never met a... Oh, I've never met her before. Oh, good God. That's bad. That's bad. Cute, but bad. <laughs> How about this one? I know a guy who's addicted to drinking brake fluid, but he says he can stop any time. Uh-huh. Once upon a time, there was a thief who stole a calendar and got 12 months. And then, did you know that when the smog lifts in L.A., or Los Angeles, UC LA. How about this one? I got some batteries that were given out free of charge. 
Ah, thanks, dead batteries, just what I always wanted. A dentist and a manicurist married, and they fought tooth and nail. <laughs> that one's kind of cute. I, I know, yeah, moving along. A will is a dead giveaway. Oh, yeah, I love, okay, that's my favorite so far. So far, that is my favorite. Okay. Um, with her marriage, she got a new name and address. <laughs> Did you know that the police were summoned to a daycare center where a three-year-old was resisting arrest? You know, naps are wasted on the young. They don't truly appreciate them. Only, only those of us my age, you know, well, let's go 40 on up truly appreciate the value of a nap. <laughs> so, did you hear about the fellow whose entire left side was cut off? Yeah, he's all right now. Bada bang. You know, I saw something earlier in the chat about that left and right, and, and here's, there's got left people and you got right people, and I think, you know, if you had put a left person and a right person together, you got a whole person. But... Or, you know, you have that left, right, left, right. Or or like they do in the military. You're left, you're left, you're left, right, left. You know, I see that stuff or I hear that and I think they're playing hopscotch. Left, left, right, left, left, moving along. I know, that one was really bad. <laughs> okay, did you know a bicycle cannot stand alone? It's just too tired. And there was a fella who fell um, onto an upholstery machine last week, and now he's fully recovered. <laughs> there was another guy that had a photographic memory, but it was never fully developed. I know people like that. And then there was this gal that when she saw her first strands of gray hair, she thought she'd die. And you know what? I have lots of gray hairs, and then, and then in order to become a little old blue-haired lady, I dyed some of them teal and some of them purple, just because. Did you know that acupuncture is a jab well done? That's the point of it. Yeah. And I didn't like my beard at first, and then it grew on me. You know, I don't have a beard, but I do have a freckle mustache. Does that count? Did you know or did you hear about the cross-eyed teacher who lost her job because she couldn't control her pupils? <laughs> Get it? Cross-eyed Mary. That's a Jethro Tull song for those of you that don't know that. And moving along, did you know that when you get a bladder infection, you're in trouble? Yeah. And if you're American... When you're outside the bathroom, what are you when you're inside the bathroom? You're peeing. <laughs> okay. When chemists die, they bury them. Okay. <laughs> and how about this one? I stay up all night to see when the sun or see where the sun went. And then it dawned on me. How about this one? I'm reading a book about anti-gravity. I just can't put it down. Well, if you do put it down, it'll it'll fall all the way down, honey. It's called mass. And finally, those who get too big for their pants will be totally exposed in the end. <laughs> that was cute. I like that one too. Although I really, really, what was that one? Where was it now? Oh, um, no. Okay, a will is a dead giveaway. I really do like that one. Okay, this date in history, the 15th of May, 1829. Joseph Smith, the man who found and translated the Book of Mormon, says this is the day on which he was ordained by, ta-da, John the Baptist. All righty. This date in history, the 15th of May, 1912, Detroit Tiger Hall of Fame baseball player Ty Cobb attacks a relentless Big Apple heckler and gets suspended by anal baseball officials. Well, did he use a bat? Just curious. This date in history, the 15th of May, 1933, U.S. Senate gets voice amplification system. Hot air on steroids ensues. 
Can you hear me now? Yep, now shut up and sit down. Oh, I would love to tell someone in Congress that. Just shut up and sit down. You do realize that most of the crap that they do is just busy work, don't you? I mean, seriously, if they, if all they did, if all they did was what was stipulated in the Constitution, they sure as hell wouldn't be full-time. It would be like once a month at most. At most. But no, they come up with a lot of job security busy work. My personal opinion. And finally, this date in history, the 15th of May, 1934, a humor-challenged Uncle Sam says enough is enough and proceeds to paint a $25,000 wanted dead or alive award on the desperado John Dillinger. And that, children, was this date in history, according to those wacky, piggish guys over here on PIGazette.com. Come on over and check them out. Say hey to Hambo and Porkus. Tell them Grammy sent you. And watch them squeal. <laughs> Not necessarily like little goyles, but yeah, they're a couple of wild men. That's all there is to it. Okay, back to my pocket I go, because I do have a little bit of time yet. So let's see. Hmm. Do I want to go? How about I go here? Well, I saw it. Grammy was. Oh no! Here we go. We'll just we'll just end with this one just beca just because cause shits and giggles, and because I like vodka. <clears throat> this is from WideOpenEats.com. It is eight benefits of vodka. A vodka. I do like my vodka. So, number one is it a it is a disinfectant, antioxidant, and antiseptic. And I have a couple of bottles. One of them is almost empty now of cheapy vodka that I use for making my own Febreze. I make um Actually, I make my own um, oh body spritz with essential oils and vodka and uh, distilled water. Um, I also make my own cleaning stuff. And there is a recipe here for vodka and Castile soap, so you can make use vodka for cleaning. Um, vodka is a stress reducer, uh -huh. unless you're stressing about how you're going to get home after having a couple of vodkas, which is why you buy a bottle, you take it home, and at the end of a stressful day, you fix yourself a martini or whatever flavor of whatever it is that you prefer to make your vodka into, and then you just kick back and max relax. That's what I do. So when I, Although my, my bottle of uh, Sky Vodka, which I got from my daughter, by the way, for Christmas, two years ago, is still three-fourths full. I don't have that many stressful days. I just got to say that. Number three, it is a hair and skin enhancer. Well, uh, apparently alcohol is an ingredient in many pore tightening and facial cleansers on the market. So it's no surprise that wood good can do the same thing that those expensive lotions and creams can do. When applied as an astringent, it can help clean clogged pores. And when applied to the scalp, it helps eliminate toxins from the hair to prevent dandruff and promote healthy hair growth. I didn't know that. And I use vodka for an awful lot of stuff around my house. Cool. It heals arthritis. Oh, booyah, bonus round. Apparently, new scientific research studies show that vodka can actually help heal symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis. Part of the reason vodka works so well is that it helps reduce inflammation just like an ice pack on a swollen wound. And it's not nearly as detrimental as acetaminophen or ibuprofen or aspirin, which are really, really hard on the liver and the intestinal tract. Once again, proportion is key. Number five, it reduces risk of disease. Vodka helps to develop collateral vessels. Ah, 
Basically, that means it increases free flow of blood flow and prevention of the development of major illnesses such as stroke and heart attacks. Oi! Now I definitely need to have a vodka. Hmm. Number six, it reduces hypertension. Hmm. It aids in creating HDL, basically good cholesterol for the body. Yeah, and my doctor, who I haven't seen in several years because I don't feel I don't need to, uh, said that HDL, the way to remember, is happy cholesterol. But, yeah, good cholesterol means the it reduces the risk of high blood pressure and heart disease. Number seven, it is a fever reducer. When rubbed onto the body as an ointment or lotion, vodka can help reduce fever from the common cold. And rubbing a few drops onto your temples has also been an old Russian folklore remedy for treating headaches and fevers. Cool. Number eight, it aids in digestion. Moderate consumption, key phrase there, moderate consumption of vodka has been used to treat irritable bowel syndrome and relieve digestive issues. So, I'm thinking I may have to have a woodka nightcap tonight. <laughs> may have to tell my daughter that when my birthday comes around, I may need another bottle of woodka because I might start... No, I won't. No, I won't. No, Grimmy, I don't. And you know what? My Febreze is basically vodka and essential oils. It's whatever scent I feel like putting in there. But in any case, thank you all. <laughs> thank you all for listening in this evening on this wacka, 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 wacka doodle Wednesday. I will be back on Friday for the Freaker Friday edition of the Rocket Chair. But until then, be sure to check out what's going on on Real Liberty Media. Check back, check often. I know Vinny has got the Ponder Gander coming up. I think Flasher has got 20% off tomorrow. I don't have my schedule pulled up, so and I'm running short on time. Um, so I think Flasher's tomorrow, 20% off. And uh, Vinny with Ponder Gander at 1 p.m. Eastern Time on Friday. I'll be back Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern Time for the Freaker Friday edition of the Rocket Chair. Grim and Moose will be on at 11 p.m. Eastern Time Friday night for the Freaker's Ball, and a good time will be had by all. And then at noon on Saturday is the Dork Table with Flasher Rooney Dork. So, lots of stuff going on, lots of reruns going on. In case you missed it the first time, you can catch it on the replay. But until we meet again, please remember, I truly do love you all. Don't mean I want to have sex with y'all. Good God, that would just be wrong. But I do, honest and for true, love you all. And I wish you all enough. Good night.